Right, I think we've got Simon now. Uh, he should be joining us uh, any second now. Sorry, this is a, a function of uh, of the uh, product hazard. It's not my uh, technical um, uh, inability. Unfortunately, I have to go live before I can actually invite the people. Uh, whereas with Blab, you've got kind of like a green room situation where you can get all the people together um, and uh, and then actually uh, patch them through. So um, uh, I, I have to now wait for, uh, I am talking to him on my mobile. I've sent him the invite uh, and uh, waiting for him. Hey, at last. Wow, that was a challenge. <laughs> it, it, I told you it's a bit hairy, isn't it? Well, it's the first time I've used, used uh, Huzza, so uh, I wasn't quite sure which buttons to press, but yeah. uh, I, I didn't realize you had to press the go on air. But yeah, I got yeah, there in the end. And it's really, really strange from Blab because with Blab, you can get everybody together. Yeah, and yeah. And basically, you go live. So it's like a green room situation. Whereas with this, you, you, you have to go live and then, and then basically invite people. Yes. When yeah. this plays back, I'm probably going to have to put like a little warning at the beginning <laughs> of it to say fast forward and with, you know to get rid of this chat. Anyway, yeah. great to have you, Simon. Yes, thank uh, you, Tim. Just, just, just quickly introduce yourself and, and explain to everybody who you are. And perfect. Uh, my, name, my, my name's Simon, Simon Ray, and, and uh, I, I do a number of different things. things. I uh, run a business called Career Codex, mm -hmm. uh, which is a careers and employability training company. Yep. Uh, I've written three books. Um, yep. I use social media extensively as part of my uh, business development strategy. Mm -hmm. I read your book recently, Tim, which I thought was excellent, which Thank prompted you. me to get in touch. Um, do a couple of other things. Uh, I do some non-exec director stuff. So I work with businesses to help them with their strategy, uh, which includes their social media strategy. Uh, and it's a privilege to be uh, on the call today with you. And, and tell us a little bit about angry white pajamas angry white pajamas great question so I, i'm a bit of a martial arts uh, guy and I, I i read a book about goodness me about 10 years ago called angry white pajamas by robert twigger uh, robert twigger was a guy who went to uh, tokyo in japan he was an oxford poet and he enrolled on uh, one of the brutalist uh, martial arts courses you can do in the world called the yoshinkan aikido senshisei program basically you train with the tokyo riot police for 11 months so i read this book saw my house saw my car got on a plane went to japan for two years and did fantastic. it yeah. uh it was fantastic experience fantastic and, and 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 there are um videos on youtube if people want to follow that <laughs> there certainly are if they go to my youtube channel uh career codex there's a couple of videos on there yeah. and uh i have a diary which is about 178 pages long of a4 so at some point in the future i'm going to publish my own version your, your next book yes yes when i get so time so when we talked, you, 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 I mean, I asked you a question about, you know, social media and it was kind of one of those things where you went, duh, I use social media pretty much for everything. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that you said, because you work in recruitment, was the importance of people having a, a, um, a personal brand. Absolutely. What, what, Absolutely. What, what, why is that? Okay. Just, just to clarify a point, I, I'm, I'm not a recruitment consultant anymore, no. but what I do is well, work with... worked in recruitment. Yeah, I worked in recruitment for, for about 10 years. Yeah. And now, using that knowledge and experience, I work with executives to help them navigate the job market successfully. Yeah. One of the big challenges that people have when they come on the job market is they look at what other people are doing. And they follow what other people are doing as if that's the route to success. And typically, what that means in the recruitment world is, is job boards uh, and talking to executive um, search firms. What I show my clients how to do is actually go direct to employer or go direct, direct to connector yeah. by creating a personal brand to gain attention, uh, to get in front of the people that they want to get in front of uh, without necessarily using the traditional channels. Because I don't know what the, the actual fact is. Someone will probably leave a comment, but it's something like 70, 80 percent of jobs aren't advertised or something. It's through network. At, at least, well, yeah, I, I, I usually say 50, 50. It's difficult okay. to know. Uh, the, the, the place where the jobs aren't advertised that I call the hidden market and, right. and the way that recruitment process works, if you're running your own business before you go out to a, a recruiter where you're going to pay some money or a, a job board where you're going to pay some money, uh, what, you, what you normally do is you have a conversation with your peer group and your extended peer group. This is the hidden market. And if you can position yourself uh, as a candidate online in the right way, you have an opportunity to find opportunities that other people never, never see. Right. And the market has changed hugely in the last uh, last five, six, seven years because LinkedIn came along. And what LinkedIn did, it gave recruiters an extra database. 
it also gave employers a database that they never had before. Yeah. So uh, when I was running my recruitment company, quite often employers would tell me, my clients would tell me, we're on LinkedIn, we're looking for a candidate directly, but we're also using your services. So if you know how to <clears throat> leverage LinkedIn, position yourself properly on LinkedIn, you can steal a march on everybody else. Right. And this is for executives at, at, at all levels. You know, whether yeah. you're, you know, I, I mean, I, um, my, my girlfriend's son's 21 and he came back from three, four months traveling in South America and got a job within two weeks. Yes. He'd actually been nurturing his LinkedIn platform for, I don't know where he got that from, that idea from, um, I, I, uh, you know, he, he was nurturing his LinkedIn platform for the time he was in South America. So yeah. when he was based, as soon as he came back into this country, he pretty much got two people saying, we're interested in you. Yes. But, yeah. but you know, you, you also have, you know, you could be a senior executive at IBM and, you know, through re restructuring, you suddenly find yourself on the job market. So if Absolutely. you're in that position, what what's your advice? Okay. Well, the first thing to say, whatever level you're at in the job market, yeah. the strategies work, the strategies are the same. Right. You're absolutely right in what you said about the uh, the gentleman coming back from traveling that you, that you just spoke about, that you have to work your profile on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I started my business career codex is because I would interview senior candidates on a regular basis and ask them, are you on social media? And they'd say, well, I've, I've got a LinkedIn profile. And I'd say, well, what are you doing with it? And they, they'd be doing generally nothing. Yeah. So that's, that, you know, having a profile, anyone can have a profile. It's what you do with it that really matters. Yeah. So for, for me, it, it's very simple. It boils down to, first of all, being very clear about who you're trying to reach through right. social media and then positioning your message through social media to that target audience so it resonates with them. And this is a longer term play. It's something you have to do on a continual basis. And I call it see me, like me, trust me, hire me. See <laughs> so me, you, like me, trust me, hire me. Trust me, hire me. Yeah. Yes. You have to be seen on the platform. Yeah. But if you're just seen, that doesn't mean a lot. Mm. If you're communicating on the platform, platform if you're engaging you know LinkedIn groups is an example people start to like what you talk about then if they like what you talk about they start to trust what, what you're saying particularly if you have an opinion in a particular industry sector or profession uh, or even geography and at that point when the organization is ready to hire or when the recruiter is ready to talk to you about an opportunity they'll get in touch so it's see me like me trust me hire me mm. Okay. And, and is there something, is there some sort of secret source that people need to be doing or, you know, is it blogging or is it, do you have to write your profile in a particular way or is it all of those things? It's, it's all of that, all of those things. I mean, the thing you start with is your, uh, is your profile. One of the most thing, most important things on your LinkedIn profile is of course the photo. Uh, there's various things you need to do to make sure that communicates the right message to your target audience. Yeah, yeah. The professional headline, again, absolutely critical. And what I see with people's professional headlines is they don't often invest a huge amount of time really thinking what that message is all about. Right. You know, it's called personal branding. You've yeah. got to put some personality into it. Yeah. Um, I changed my professional headline about six months ago. Um, since I did that, I've had a great response a better response than i've ever had because it's it's catchy it, it taps into people's emotions mm. it gets them interested to read on and read further mm. but then as you as you rightly said it's then about using linkedin proactively as a proactive engagement tool so it's things like groups yeah. listening first in groups yeah. but then starting to engage in the conversation mm. having an opinion yeah. um publish posts mm. you know i get my clients to, to write a published post some of them have never written a blog in their lives um but once you do that and you do it consistently, and that's the important point, you start to get a message out there that people start to see and start to expect. Mm. And, and I've actually found, I, I actually just, I did, I did an experiment, and I'm actually explaining this with, because people watching should actually, should actually look at things from an experimental point of view. Mm. So I would actually recommend changing your title. Yes. And, and actually exper experimenting with certain things. Um, I, and I put tech blogger in my title and I actually started getting inbound about things. Yes. Um, and yes. then took it out and then that actually that inbound stopped. And it's just interesting how certain things. And so I actually did a blog this week. It was about normally I, I talk about social around selling. Mm -hmm. And this week I actually wrote about a closing plan, which is kind of traditional sales. Yeah. And it's interesting, actually, the type of people that I, I've now actually reached. I'm getting more people who like it who are nine number two connections. Mm -hmm. than necessarily the number ones who uh, who who would actually normally read the social selling stuff yes so it's yeah. actually interesting and i'm just saying this to people because if you change or, or move the way that you blog or the title or, or the subject matter you can actually move the, the 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 way you're you're working on social around the 
the the you can't see my arms moving, but you know, kind of round <laughs> LinkedIn. Yes. And, and 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 if you think about it as a as a you know a ball that you can move around to get to the right people, and experiment with it. I mean, do you agree or am I? I, I totally agree with you. The, the first thing is you have to know who you're trying to reach. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of language they will they will find interesting and resonate will resonate with them. I'll give you an example in a minute. Um, <clears throat> the second thing you have to do is you have to use trial and error mm. because people are different. Mm. And what I what I always say to people is don't don't just knee jerk. So you know don't just try it for 24 hours. Mm. Try something for a month. Yes. Record the response. Record the engagement because that's what we're looking for. Um, and see how you go on, and then try something different. Mm. I changed my professional headline from a career coach to trainer, coach, and corner man. Okay. okay. So I injected some personality in there, martial arts experience. Part of that was, was boxing. You have a corner man who's, who sits and helps you no, through yeah. the, uh, the fight. And, and I've, I've had more interest, and people have used that language to me because they've landed on the profile and thought, wow, I kind of get a sense for what this guy does. But actually, he's communicating it in a different way that's memorable. Mm. And I want to find out a little bit more. And that's all you want. Because with, with social, you know, of course, what we're trying to do is to get engagement to try and at some point get an offline uh, conversation and a face to face uh, meeting because that's how we transact in the in the real world. So it works. Yeah. And, 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 and even though people may not be, you know, some people need to actually, you know, all of a sudden they've been taken into a room and sort of said, I'm, you know, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, things are things are, are changing and, 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 you know, and, and you're not going to be part of it. But I think people need to also take sort of strategy and 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 or, of, and, and I know we shouldn't be putting um, our CVs on on LinkedIn, but you can still use it as, as a tool to find um, opportunity. You know, Absolutely. you can look at the endorsements. You can get you can get the um, the recommendations, and you can change them or you can seek them. And yes. it's those sort of things where you're it's kind of things that you're putting in your back pocket. I yeah. know I, I attended the presentation from LinkedIn, and they said that. Um, they can tell um, from somebody's LinkedIn profile six months before they actually start looking for a job. Yeah, because yeah. actually, start some of them are actually tinkering with it. Then what happens is a kind of six months of actually looking, and then they, and then then they then they change the title or the name of the company, and they've gone through that process. Yeah, but they yeah. can actually see what's happening from from you know it's a big pool of mm -hmm. four hundred million professionals. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes need to some people need to take a strategic approach to say, I, I don't really want to be where I am, but where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. And I want to be here in three or four years at time. Okay, what can I do to my profile to actually do that proactively? Absolutely, and one of one of the one of the big challenges up front is you know the first thing you don't do is is create a LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. or write your CV. You got to really define the opportunity that you want because until you know that and you're clear on it then you don't know what information you need to communicate and who you need to communicate it to. Mm. Um, I think um, you know LinkedIn is the, is the premier platform most yeah. definitely for, for the kind of clients that I work for. <clears throat> one, of, one of the challenges sometimes they have is exactly what you just said. Okay, I've never really used LinkedIn before. Mm. If I suddenly start to get active on it, aren't people going to know I'm looking for a job? Mm. And the answer is, well, possibly, mm. which is one of the reasons that you need to be active on LinkedIn all of the time. Then it's no surprise, and people don't know that you're necessarily looking for a job. And this is, the, this is why it's not see me, hire me. Mm. It's see me, like me, trust me, trust me. hire me. I mean, yeah. I, I, and, and I agree with you about having that. You, you, um, there's a, um, a blog that I put out about the one thing that you're missing from your LinkedIn profile, mm. and that one thing is the fact that you're a human being. Yes, and and you can tick all the boxes and and, and fill in all the and, and 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 you know try and look like a salesperson that, that's changed their LinkedIn platform so they don't look like a, a mm. salesperson. But at the end of the day, it's about having that human and that humour, because because actually we we kind of, we we do judge each other or we do judge make judgments on people when we look at their LinkedIn profiles. Absolutely, and I think I think you've got to have your personality in there. You've got to have opinion in there. And the, the worst mistake that you can make on the platform is trying to is trying to appeal to everybody. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I put out a regular uh, weekly newsletter, blog post, and podcast, and, and video, as you know. And you know, sometimes I get a message from somebody who doesn't like it, yeah. and they're, they're they're pretty critical. And I think fantastic. Hmm. You're not you're not the customer I want. But but for every one that does that, hopefully there's ten that it really resonates but, with. But but Simon, that's engagement. It is, and 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 you know, actually having uh, I, I was the reason why I've got shirts on is I was with a customer this morning, 
and you know we were we we're in the process of where we we're writing some blog posts for them and working on their social media um, and we're actually saying what we need to be is controversial mm. and we're not bothered that someone's going to say i don't agree with that because at that point you're talking to them and you're engaging yeah and 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 it's about having then having that conversation mm. and then you can always say okay well yeah I, you know um, i actually just put that out because i want to form some sort of debate mm. i mean i put one out recently about profanity in business yes or no and and that just you know the amount of people that wrote <laughs> um and but the thing is is that the the that my message and that and that debate went through and, and other people saw it yes and, yeah. and that's kind of for me some of the things about the personal brand is that then getting out into the community and, and getting out into the twos connections and the three connections because funny enough i got a book to sell as, as well as a consulting <laughs> company and stuff to sell and and, and ultimately I mean, if someone came back and said, yeah, your blog's like an advertorial, it's like, yeah, I'm a salesman. What do you expect? You know? Well, of course. <laughs> of, of, of course. Of course. Yeah, I think you have to be, you have to be quite thick-skinned with this stuff and you have to really know yourself. The, 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 the most important thing, coming back to, to successful job search, is confidence. Yes. Uh, and your confidence takes knocks here, there, and everywhere because rejection is part of the process. So the big challenge for executives when they enter the job market is it happens to them personally and it's about doing something continually for a length of time to get the result because we can all put one published post on LinkedIn yeah can we put you know 50 over the course of a year if that's how long it takes yeah. so it, it really is about resilience and about about being very clear about who you are what you stand for uh, and not bending with the wind, you know. I, I, think, I think saying what you stand for is a really interesting point, because um, I, I think it's just too easy to, to take information and, and then and then disseminate it out through social channels. Yeah. Rather than saying that, I, you know, I, I decided I'm, I I did a blogging course, and I and the, and the person said, so what are you going to stand for? And I kind of went, I don't know. And then when actually I'm in the middle of a massive transformational project that includes social selling, I'm going to be known for social selling. Yeah. And I hope and, and I suspect that most people that are watching this go, yeah, Tim, you're the social selling guy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, Which is, it's why I got in touch with you. Yes. And, 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 you know, and then all kinds of things came out, you know, like I, I wrote a book and stuff. I haven't written as many as you, but hey, you know, I'll catch you up. Um, <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, but it, it's about being then known for something and building that brand. Absolutely. And I think sometimes um, us British people, we, uh, we can sometimes be a little bit modest mm -hmm. and we sit on the sidelines with our arms folded and, and, and we don't sort of kind of talk our opinions. Mm -hmm. And while my recommendation is always to play nicely with the children and don't start tweeting about politics and stuff like that because you'll, you'll end up down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, you know, most people, if, if someone puts something out about, you know, will artificial intelligence um, have an impact on marketing? Come, on, most people have got a view on that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and 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 so expresses. And even if you 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 know don't go and have a you know, go to Google, read on something, and then come back with a view. Mm -hmm. And I think people will respect you for that. I think so. I think I think most definitely. I think you have to, you know, you're the social selling guy. I'm the uh, job search strategist. You are, yeah. If you like. And, and and that message gets out. If, if if you were the social selling guy and this, this and this and this and this, it dilutes your message and you, you lose your you lose the audience. Sa same with me. So I was very uh, and I think uh, I think in business, the temptation is when you set a business up, the temptation is to do everything for everybody because you definitely get some business. Mm. Most dangerous thing you can do because mm. you have to stand for something. You have to know when to say no. Mm. Uh, and You have to know what you stand for. So I, t I totally agree with what you said and have an opinion. The world's a boring place if nobody has an opinion. Yeah, it really is. I mean, we I, I interviewed Ian Moyes on here, and, and Ian's um, sales director of the year. You know, who runs a sales team, and he's amazed that people come to him who, and they won't have actually done any research on him. Yeah, and they yeah. and and he'll and, and he usually opens up the interview with, with, "Can you tell me a few things about me?" Yeah. Yeah, and, and, well, and, and I mean, he posts. I mean, you know, he was posting pictures of me, of him and my book in his shorts on some. I can't remember where it was um, in in South America somewhere. So there's lots of information actually about him, about where he goes on holiday and stuff. And some people are going, oh, I don't know anything about you. Yeah, no excuse for that these days. No at all. I mean, I mean, in terms of the in terms of social personal brand, is this something that even though you're saying job seekers, you know, is this something that everybody needs to have? I, I believe so. Yes, right. I believe I believe so because 
we are we we have moved from the you know industrial age whatever to the to the to the digital age and you can either say i'm going to embrace it i'm going to get on board or i'm going to try and resist it if you resist it you're going to get left behind whether that be in business personal or whatever else it doesn't mean you've got to be on every single platform yeah what it does mean you have to have some uh some visibility because if somebody's looking to engage with you in business for example when i look to engage with somebody in business yeah. i search them I do do due diligence, not just on their website, which is, you know, you're going to, you get what you expect on the website. I look at them as individuals because we all transact as individuals. If they don't have a LinkedIn profile and I can't find anything about them on social media, I start to question, you know, do they, do they exist? I I think social media is, 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 is the heartbeat. It's an extension of your heartbeat. And if you have a, a Twitter account, you have a LinkedIn account, what you need to do is to communicate content on a regular basis on message, what you stand for, to show that you're alive and well and, and engaged. And um, business or opportunities will come to you as a result. Mm. Uh, I've had two fantastic opportunities come to me this week, completely out of the blue, but then not really out of the blue because that's based on six months of, uh, of activity mm. uh, on social media. And, and do you find that stuff comes to you as well in terms of you, you're kind of out there and it kind of comes? And, and um, so I know that we're saying, yeah, you need to pre-plan it. Mm. But sometimes it actually comes into the letterbox. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. For example, this week, um, there's a, a gentleman reached out to me. He's based over in Europe. We've never spoken. He connected to me on LinkedIn. Uh, I connected back. He then phoned me up. He's right. an executive recruiter, works for one of the biggest search firms in the world, hmm. uh, one of the most reputable search firms in the world. And he phoned me up to say, I've been watching your stuff, reading your stuff for the past few months. I bought your book and I read it. Hmm. I didn't know any of this. And he said, I really think you can help some of my clients that, that we've not managed to place. Right. And uh, what a generous offer. And I said, well, wow, that's amazing. And he's already referred two people to me in the wow. past two or three days. Hmm. I've got a, an, another client that I'm working with at the moment. Uh, he's, he's based in the States. Uh, again, he read my stuff, watched my stuff for a few months. He then reached out. He'd read the book. Uh, he's now on my program. Uh, he's about to, well, he's actually done it, but he's introduced me to one of the biggest um networking opportunities in his industry sector right. as a as a specialist uh advisor job search strategist mm-hmm. to see if i can help more people like him those opportunities all arose from social media to your to your own personal brand and kind of being out there and that and not Absolutely. sitting in your garage in um i can't remember you not nottingham or derby yeah, not, nottingham yeah nottingham not and, and 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 that panicking about why things aren't coming through the letterbox anymore yeah, and and I think I think you raise this point in your book that, you know, when you try and convince a, a if you work for a larger business or whatever, and you try and convince people in the business who have not necessarily used social media that social media is a great idea. It's sometimes hard to do that because you don't always see the immediate payoff and 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 advertising or clicks through or or whatever else. Yep, great, but you've got to play the longer term game, and uh, it can be sometimes difficult to do that. Uh, if people haven't embraced it, and this is the you know the change maker uh, that you talk about, and I think that's a yeah. great way to, to to describe it. Absolutely. Yeah. Whereas uh, I interviewed Simona Pop, who's a uh, um, a, uh, a salesperson selling into enterprise procurement, and she actually uses social for everything. And she just went to a CEO of a large burger chain and said, "And I'm going to." She actually did it a little bit more politely and a bit more subtly than this. But say, "Do you want to buy my stuff?" Yeah. And he came back and said, no, not right now because you're a startup, but give me a contact in two years' time, mm-hmm. which is, you know, qualifying out is just as important as sometimes as qualifying. Oh. But she, uh, she, uh, I just went to this person and because her her view is, and, and my view is actually social media can speed things up. Yes. You can come yes. to this, like that person has come to you and fa- and said, right, do, and, and then all of a sudden the things can happen really, really quickly. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the connections can take place because you can actually scale on a global basis. Absolutely, and and my my belief with social media is you can reach anybody in the world, mm. and you're you're more likely to have success reaching anybody in the world because when you engage them through social, you give a bit of a bit of yourself away. They 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 naturally have an invitation to come back and look uh, and talk to you and see uh, what you're uh, what you're all about. So, if you're prepared to do that and you invest the time to learn how to use the platforms and use the platforms properly. Um, yeah, go direct. You, you talk about it in your book. You talk about the fact that cold calling is not dead. It's not dead, not dead. but you you preempt it hmm. with engagement, so that when you do 
engage. And when you do get on the phone or face to face, which you still need to do, um, they have a sense of you and they have a reason to take that call or a reason to, to take that meeting. Now, I've done social sale, selling training on telesales teams mm -hmm. because it's uh, uh, ever since the you know the beginning of time, we've always tried to get over from the cold call to have a more warmer call. Yeah. And, and social media actually enables you. And, 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 and the, the sales manager, uh, Duncan there, who um, uh, I, I remember well because he got this personal brand thing. Yeah. He realized that he could actually, as a cold caller, actually use his personal brand to get through to people that he couldn't normally get through to. Absolutely. Because I can't remember, we were joking that he was going to be called Duncan Duncan Says or whatever the Twitter handle was. And we were, yeah. and we we're building this brand around that. And he basically, you know, I, I'm Duncan Says, and immediately people would get you through. And, uh, and um, you know, maybe for cold callers looking in, that's something that they could, they could uh, um, look at. So Simon, do you use any particular tools or products or are you, you know, or? Yeah, I, uh, in terms of software. Yeah. And what have you. Yeah. So I, my, my big channels are LinkedIn primary. Mm. Uh, I use Twitter. <clears throat> I use Facebook as well. Right. A couple of things that I've been using recently. Uh, I use something called Social Jukebox. Okay. Uh, so Social Jukebox is a way that if you've created content and you need a certain amount of content, mm. you can automate the distribution of this content. Right. Uh, out to the marketplace right. now it's like a buffer or a yeah crowd. yes similar right. similar now i don't do that on all channels right. but for something like twitter where your lifetime is is fairly short because you push down continually yeah. it's a great tool to keep engagement right the other thing that i i've i've used with with good success recently is something called juicer oh. j-o-o-i-c-e-r right um this is a really clever have you, have you come across no, this one it's a really clever product. I, I, I think I was recommended it. But basically, what you, you use this on Twitter, mm -hmm. and what you can do is you can tell uh, Juicer to follow uh, people with, with a certain username. So if I wanted, if I put you into Juicer and said, follow everybody that uh, follows Tim mm -hmm. over a period of time, Juicer would automate that process and follow all of your followers. Okay. So, yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's a little bit hit and miss, but what, what's really clever about it is it follows them. And if you've got, if you've got a profile that grabs attention, they're likely to follow you back. Mm. Um, if they don't, within five days, it unfollows. So it keeps your ratio in a, in, right. in a good state. I've had the first bit of success from that mm. uh, in the past couple of days. Guy from America, um, he has been onto my website. He filled in my job search assessment on there. I asked him, why have you contacted me? He says, because you followed me on Twitter. I didn't do that physically. Hmm. I did that automated. It, it, it's a touch point. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And, 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 and most people will actually go back and say, who is that? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, and, 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 and decide whether to follow back. But you're, in a way, you're, it's, a, it's a bit of, you know, you're, you're getting there and saying, hello, it's me, you know. And, yeah. 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 I think there's a danger, and I've seen, I've seen this done to an extreme, whereby you know it's a machine. Yeah. Um, the content that's been sent out, you know they've not created it. It's regurgitated. I tend to err on the side of I distribute more original content than shared content. Right. Um, because that, for me, if we're talking about personal brand, allows me to convey my personal brand in a stronger in a stronger way rather than by association with the content I share. It's, it's, it's by creation of that content, which, of course, is all. Uh, and, and that's, a, you know, that's, that's, for people starting out, that you know, it, it's it's always about curating other people's content. Yeah, and I think that, that there is a point when you flip, where yes. where you where there's a confidence level where you're actually, you know, I create more than than I probably than, than I than I curate now. Yeah, but I but I got thirty thousand followers just by retweeting other people's stuff. Wow. Um, wow. And um, but you know I, I you know and, and it's a great uh, I you know I love creating content like this and putting it out and seeing people's reaction and getting the feedback it's a it's a fantastic feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. It requires more time investment. Yes, but there's there's various ways to to do it. What we're doing today, you can blog, you can podcast, you can do all sorts of stuff. I mean, this is a very easy, straightforward. I mean, you know, it takes time because you know you have to talk to the person on the phone. Um, it was kind of easy with you because you friend me you said, can I go on your webcast, which is fine. <laughs> Otherwise, I didn't, you know, so I'm not having to search somebody out. You know, mm -hmm. we talk on the phone. You've got a very, you've got a very a fantastic story to tell. 
um, and and it was obvious that you were going to make a fabulous guest, um, and so it's kind of easy. And, and I've got a set of notes, and 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 I and I can follow that. But you know, in the time spent of creating some content, you know, we've now been on the phone for th- you know it's, it's sixty minutes in terms of the the total time in, t- in creating the content. It's yeah. it's a it's a l- low amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I try and explain to people that actually creating good content mm. doesn't have to take a lot of time. No, and you get better at it. Yeah. You know, I I. I do a uh, I do a, a podcast, I do a blog, and I do a video every single week. When I first did it, it would take me two days to do the lot because there's a the technical element that comes afterwards in terms of publishing it, processing it, if you do it yourself. Now I can do all of that in two hours. Right. And you can repurpose content, of course, can't yes. you? You know, the narrative from today could become a blog post. It, it, so, it could do, yeah. I mean, I've, I, um, in, in, when I was putting my book out on pre-sale, all of the blog posts that I put out to promote that, I'd written in the, in the two years pre- previous. Yeah. Um, and because um, even though you're putting stuff out, not everybody will see it. You know, how many mm-hmm. be- billion people are there out there in the world? And there'll be one or two saying, oh, Tim's put that post out again. Um, but the other people going, wow, I've not seen that before. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, with reusing content. Not not at all, particularly on the channels where it where it, it's got a short time life. Mm. You know, Twitter is is a prime example of that. Um, so you know, I think you have to be a bit careful in LinkedIn groups, depending on how many people are in the groups and how many people are posting in the groups. Mm. But uh, yeah, if it, if it, if it's good content today, it'll be good con- content tomorrow, and probably good content this time next year. Mm. So that that's why I use some automation, but I'm very adamant that. I create my own content right? because then I know I think that the, the big mistake people make with curation is they'll they're, they're time poor. They'll read something. They'll perhaps read the first half of it, scan, read the rest. They'll put it out there. Someone will comment. Someone will say something. And they realize that in actual fact, the message they thought they were associated with isn't actually the message that got it, delivered. It's and that's that you put a really good uh, headline on it. And actually the rest of it's press release. Yeah, because I don't know what it is, but forty percent, maybe fifty percent of people actually don't read what they're what they're posting. No, um, and don't. they'll just throw it out, and and they just use that as a way of putting out press releases. Some of them are good, actually. Some of them are actually just like standard press releases. Yeah, that's that's kind of the mud at the wall strategy. It, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer that. I prefer the targeted strategy. Know what you stand for. Know who you want to engage with. Communicate in a way. Um, that resonates with that person on the channels that they're on, uh, which is why LinkedIn for my executive clients is so important because that's where they are. Mm. It's, a, it's an old um, Cadbury um, uh, saying, which was uh, load far aim. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's, it's uh, that there is a time and a place for throwing mud at the wall and hoping mm. it sticks. Um, and but otherwise, I think you've got to kind of be you've got to be focused and you've got to be personal and, and actually social allows you to do that kind of yeah. allows you to do both. But yeah. don't just rely on, on 1950s broadcast advertising. I think that's no, definitely. It was definitely 2016, not. yeah, yeah, very expensive but, and doesn't necessarily work. So, so, Simon, remind us again what your um, your your four pointers are, and also tell us where everybody can can get hold of you in terms of your Twitter address and your LinkedIn and stuff. Okay, great. So uh, I guess the, the one of the principal messages I've delivered today, yeah. see me, like me, trust me, hire me. Mm-hmm. If you're watching this and you're in business, you have a product to sell, mm-hmm. it's the same. Mm-hmm. See me, like me, trust me, buy me. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of getting in touch with me, my website is Career Codex. That's C-A-R-E-E-R-C-O-D-E-X.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, on there, there's various ways to subscribe to my weekly newsletter if you like some content similar to this mm-hmm. um, moving forward. Uh, Twitter handle at Career Codex, and I'm always keen to connect with people on LinkedIn. So you can seek me out on LinkedIn. Mm. Um, my username on LinkedIn is Simon Gray. That's G R A Y A C A. And uh, if you watch this and you enjoyed it, uh, please connect and send me a personal message and let me know what you thought. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for your time today and your insightful uh, uh, discussion about uh, personal branding. Thanks, Tim. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Simon, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.